It is a critical time for our nation, and the American Center for Law and Justice is on the front lines, defending life and liberty, engaging the issues that matter most to you and your family. Whether it's working to protect Americans from the dangers of radical Islam and the persecution of Christians, to defending life at the U.S. Supreme Court, to protecting your religious and constitutional freedoms, we could not do this work without you, without your support. And now your support can really make a tremendous difference. For a limited time, you can participate in the ACLJ Matching Challenge. If you make a gift now, it will be doubled. $25 becomes $50. A $100 gift becomes $200. Please stand with the ACLJ right now and call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or go online at aclj.org. Thank you for your support. Live from Washington, D.C., Jay Sekulow Live. Phone lines are open for your questions right now. And now, Chief Counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice, Jay Sekulow. We've got two cases at the Supreme Court of the United States we have just filed uh, and uh, are involved in. One where we filed it, what's called a cert petition. We're asking the court to hear a case where a student was asked a question uh, about what he bases his morals upon. Uh, this was, what do you base your morals on? That was in the interview for a program to be a radiation technologist. He said, my faith. That's all he said was my faith. That student was denied admission to this college program because he said my faith. And the, and the, uh, the professor that was evaluating his admission application said, the client brought up religion a great deal during the interview, but religion cannot be brought up in the clinic by therapists or students. By the way, the only time he raised his faith was when he was asked that one question. And we have that in discovery. That case is now pending at the United States Supreme Court. Then there is a decision out of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit also where prayer before a government function, legislative assembly or local government function, was deemed to be unconstitutional despite the facts that other courts have held it to be constitutional. Those, Both of those cases right now poised at the Supreme Court. The case involving the student, by the way, was just filed at the Supreme Court yesterday. I'm literally holding my hand right now. Uh, the cert petition that we filed at the Supreme Court. Uh, going to the student case, you get this question in your college interview, what do you base your morals on? And you answer your faith. And you're denied admission because you said your faith. What else do you base your morals on? I mean, let, let's all just like think about that for a moment. How else would I mean, you answer I mean, that question? The moral, moral word is tied to faith uh, directly. I mean, morality and faith kind of go hand in hand. So... I mean, what were they looking for? Some creative response to what you base your morals on, or what's good and bad, and what's uh, the gray areas? And I think a simple, yes. the most simple and clear answer is that my Star morals Trek. are based off my my uh, my faith code that, that right. instructs me how to your live view. my life uh, and my worldview, which is directed by my faith. And that is uh, again a reason why to deny admission to someone from a program that would be in a medical situation having to help people right uh who were hurting uh people who were in uh conditions that uh, may not be able to survive and saying that your faith is what directs your moral code is the reason why you are denied admission folks this is not the united states of america anymore if this stands and so far unfortunately it has these courts oh the judiciary these courts have said oh that's okay how could you answer that question judge I'd love to ask them that. I'd love to ask these judges, what would you say? How do you define your morals? What would you say? Oh, I have none. Oh, everything is gray. There really is no morality. That's what the left really believes, is that there is no uh, good answer for that. More. Everything is relative. 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 That's how they view everything. That's probably how, what they so, wanted to answer. Yeah, I mean, they were, yeah. So, or he'd say, based on my life experiences. But here's the, here's the fact. This is now a case at the Supreme Court of the United States. The question presented is direct. Did the Fourth Circuit commit an error by holding that the free speech clause has no application to private speech expressed during an interview of an applicant seeking admission to a competitive academic program of college? 
because the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals actually said that the First Amendment free speech clause does not apply to that process. It's a public school. No application. Public, public university, public college. The free speech clause of the First Amendment of the United States Constitution has no application. That's what's going on in America's colleges today. Let me tell you a couple other things. If you need help, like this student did, just go to aclj.org. Look under resources right on the homepage. You'll scroll down. It says get our help, and you'll be able to fill out the form there, and we'll get a, one of our team to take a look at your situation and see if it fits in with the kind of cases we're involved in. We're going to make sure that's also on the homepage, hopefully by tomorrow. We are in a matching challenge campaign, so when we talk about two cases at the Supreme Court of the United States, which we have right now, pro-life case and a religious freedom case for the student, uh, we are relying on you, our members and friends, to support the work of the ACLJ. We're in a matching challenge campaign. That means any amount you donate to us, we get a matching gift for us. Let me encourage you to go to aclj.org. That's aclj.org. You donate $20, we get 40 40 is 80 80 is 160 So we encourage you to support the work of the ACLJ. Very, very important. That's how we do these cases. And again, we'll talk more about it when we come back from the break. It is a critical time for our nation. And the American Center for Law and Justice is on the front lines, defending life and liberty, engaging the issues that matter most to you and your family. Whether it's working to protect Americans from the dangers of radical Islam and the persecution of Christians, to defending life at the U.S. Supreme Court, to protecting your religious and constitutional freedoms, we could not do this work without you, without your support. And now your support can really make a tremendous difference. For a limited time, you can participate in the ACLJ Matching Challenge. If you make a gift now, it will be doubled. $25 becomes 50. A $100 gift becomes $200. Please stand with the ACLJ right now and call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or go online at aclj.org. Thank you for your support. By the way, we do have a brand new resource up at uh, aclj.org. We're talking about these religious freedom cases. And that is, if you want, if you need legal help in your community, uh, that, for instance, the case that we've got involving uh, Dustin Buxton, he's the student we're representing against the uh, uh, Baltimore Community College system. He came in through our aclj.org website, right at the website. If you need help, go to resources. And there's a form that's called Get Our Help. And you can fill it out and let us know the issues that you're facing in your community or that your son or daughter or that you may be facing. And if we can offer help, we want to do that. And we're going to move that to the uh, homepage to make it a little bit easier for you in the day, probably by tomorrow. But again, that's how this case came in. Let me recast the case for you so you know. We filed a petition for search for that is a request for review with the Supreme Court on this particular case involving the student, Dustin Buxton. I'm holding my hand for our television audience, the certiorari petition that we filed. We allege in there that the student was discriminated against because of his answer to this question. What do you base your morals on? His simple response was this, my faith. The administrator that was reviewing his application in the interview said he raised religion too much. Religion cannot be brought up in the clinic by therapists or students. He said at one time, he just said my faith. Now, if most of you were asked what your morals were, I think a lot of you would say your faith. Yeah, but that right. was a disqualifier for uh, the Baltimore Community yeah, College yeah. System. And the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals said, that's okay. And he never said, and I'm going to start sharing this with everyone here, They were. this is a question about himself personally, his moral code, not what he was going to do with patients. I think that this, uh, uh, again, retroactive. So if you answer the question honestly, without then having an opportunity to serve in the position, and this is the only reason you're disqualified, I mean, it's one thing if he came in, answered this way, and then started preaching to everybody in the place. I get that. But he never got that chance to even show that he was just a normal person and his faith guided his morals. I mean, that's where 
That is so basic for the United well, States would, of America. I think I you mean, asked the right like question. What fathers. would the answer be? You want to pull the quotes? Pull some quotes from the founding fathers, having relied on divine providence. I guess they would be, you know, we're going to, you know, deny Jefferson. And I don't think anybody admission. thought that they were like going around uh, always preaching in each other's face about that. Yeah, give it me was, some founding father quotes. It was about themselves personally. What what drove them personally to have a moral character, a moral background? And for most people in the country, uh, a faith or some idea of faith uh, and a belief system is what does that. I mean, that that's the whole point of having a moral code is that you have to have something to base it on. But here's, it, here's the ridiculous nature of the opinion. I'm reading this from page six of the certiorari petition. The free speech clause has no application to private speech expressed in the context of a public college's com- uh, competitive admissions process. Now, how could that possibly be correct? How could the First Amendment's free speech clause not apply to a question you're being asked? Because your response would be a free speech response. But because it's religious speech, they treat it differently. And the fact of the matter is, faith, a religious speech, is not entitled to some kind of second-class treatment. Religious speech and advocacy, just as O'Connor said, is entitled to the full protection of the First Amendment. We've been arguing that. I've been arguing that for 37 years, including three decades at the Supreme Court. So the Fourth Circuit just got it wrong here, so we're hopeful that the Supreme Court will correct it. All right, we've got a lot of calls coming in, Logan. A lot of comments coming in on Facebook as well. And Periscope, let's go ahead and take a call or comment. Let's go to Dana in Orlando, Florida. Line one, you're on the air. Hi, Dana, go ahead. Hi, this is Dana. Hi. Um, Well, I believe that my faith is also my foundation of my moral code as, as an attorney and a student of the law. What did they expect him to lie and therefore, you get you qualify for the job if he lied. This was admission um, to a college program, but keep, keep keep going. But yes, I think they would rather have him not say what the truthful answer was. I hate to say it, but right. I think that's and, what it and is. The, and the problem is, so what you're saying is that they are entitled to discriminate on only that speech which is religious, but not on any other speech. And well, unfortunately they, for them. Our nation was founded because of religious beliefs that led to political free ideology. Well, yeah, I mean, Justice uh, O'Connor famously said it would be ironic that a nation founded by religious refugees would sever the ties that bind it to that status today. And that she was talking about under God and the Pledge of Allegiance. Jefferson, in uh, this is interesting also, a letter that uh, Jefferson wrote to Dr. Benjamin Rush. I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man, which this university in missions was engaged in. Uh, I mean, I can go on and on and on, but I will say this. The idea that religious speech can be treated this way is absurd in a free country. And the Fourth Circuit uh, condoning that makes it, in my view, even worse. So that's how I view the situation. I mean, legislation is often based on morality. And all of a sudden, we can say now that, that members of the of the legislative, I don't know if we have Than down there yet, but yeah, we do. So Than, you got, you, you've got a whole prayer caucus in the in the United States Congress, Religious Freedom Caucus. you got a whole caucus. prayer caucus. You've got the United States House and the United States Senate, Jay, that open every single day in prayer. I know you're going to talk about that case as well, but look, yep. I would go back to the conversation you just had with Jordan. This is the most troubling because it's now in the judiciary. And we've talked on this broadcast a lot about the attacks on the political left, including Judge Amy Barrett, my friend Russ Vogt, who was attacked for his faith for serving in government. But, Jay, the fact that the judiciary is now starting to follow the lead of the political left, that's another layer that's even worse. Here's the interesting thing, Judge Amy Barrett, your support of our call to point out that religious hostility to her, she got confirmed to be a judge on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit. So, again, we're not just talking about it here. We're, we're getting the job done on this. All right, uh, let me go ahead. Let's take another phone call or a comment. Yeah, Janet said on Facebook, what other morality did they expect him to have? Well, this is the question, Jordan, that you've asked. I mean, what, yeah. why would that – Here's the, let me give the exact question. I think it's important to have you – Yeah, know, I like yeah. the evidence here. So here is the exact question. The question is, what do you base your morals on? To which he responded, this is uh, our client, my faith. That's it. <laughs> That's what he said. All right. I mean, that is like so generic. If you're going to ask faith? that question, then that has to Did be like top three either. answers. What faith? Did they say, Family is, is it some specific faith or some unique faith? But no, they what? jumped to the conclusion that if you have uh, this faith, uh, then that's too much because this is a no faith Zone. You realize that. That's what they're saying. It's a no faith zone. That after the interview, uh, he was denied admission, uh, and he inquired why. And and then the person who gave uh, the did, interview did the interview stated that 
Mr. Buxton brought up religion a great deal. One time in the deposition we found. I mean, my, thing, I mean not even, it, not even brought up religion. Was, my faith was faith, his answer. Not really bringing up religion. And that religion cannot be brought up in the clinic by therapists or students. This is angry atheist. I guarantee you this person hates religious people. Okay, well, I mean, has some animus towards religious people and thinks that this should be a faith-free zone. And he never said it It wouldn't be. He was asked how his morals came together, not how he would be conducting himself with morals. But let me tell you what he also said, though. This is what the, the uh, person that was in charge of the admission, this was her other response when, in, when, when the client requested to find out why he got denied admission. Quote, I understand that religion is a major part of your life. However, this field is not the place for religion. If you interview in the future, you may want to leave your thoughts and beliefs out of the interview process. I mean, this should be a slam dunk. She should, should have been be. terminated yeah. or, or reprimanded. And the policy should have been changed. Instead, we have to be on the defensive, which we're not, because we yeah. brought a lawsuit and we're taking it up to the Supreme Court of the United I States yesterday. If if, uh, if uh, she, uh, this was a woman who wore a headscarf and was a Muslim, they would say you must take it off to have this job. Or, oh, yeah, right. Or, or someone Jewish who wore a yarmulke. Hey, this is not a place for faith, so take your yarmulke off uh, or else you can't, you can't work here. I mean, think about where this goes. And all he said was, what, what do you base your morals on my faith? I don't even know if he got into what faith that was. Right. I mean, that that's the absurdity here. And it's why the fact that even after all these big cases that we're working on, this is still happening in the United States of America to American people applying for jobs, asking what appear to be now setup questions. Right. That's, a, that's the only answer that makes sense. It's the only answer. And if you answer it incorrectly. Right. Then- then, you get uh, denied admission to a university program. That's what happens if you do that incorrectly. William said, will any judge Supreme Court actually uphold this absurd bigotry? So here's what happened. So we filed, this is what I'm holding in my hand. This is the petition for writ of certiorari. We need four justices to say they want to hear the case. If they say they want to hear the case, if they, in other words, grant the petition, it's just a one-sentence order, the petition for certiorari is hereby granted. We then get to brief the case and generally have oral argument. So like those pro-life cases that we've got pending right now, we're waiting for that order. We're now waiting for this. So right now we have three cases pending at the uh, – you are uh, two cases pending at the U.S. Supreme Court uh, on the merits uh, that we're dealing with right now. Uh, and again, we're waiting for certiorari orders. In the normal situation, uh, those pro-life center cases should have been granted. There were conflicts in the circuit. In this one, it's such an outrageous decision. It should be granted review. You got to – you know, we work really hard to get it there. We've written excellent cert petitions. But getting it there, you got to get those four justices to say they want to hear the case, and then you start the briefing process all over again. We are in a matching challenge campaign, so when we talk about two cases at the Supreme Court of the United States, which we have right now, pro-life case and a religious freedom case for the student, uh, we are relying on you, our members and friends, to support the work of the ACLJ. We're in a matching challenge campaign. That means any amount you donate to us, we get a matching gift for us. Let me encourage you to go to aclj.org. That's aclj.org. You donate $20, we get 40 40 is 80 80 is 160 So we encourage you to support the work of the ACLJ. Very, very important. That's how we do these cases. And again, we'll talk more about it when we come back from the break. It is a critical time for our nation. And the American Center for Law and Justice is on the front lines, defending life and liberty engaging the issues that matter most to you and your family. Whether it's working to protect Americans from the dangers of radical Islam and the persecution of Christians, to defending life at the U.S. Supreme Court, to protecting your religious and constitutional freedoms, we could not do this work without you, without your support. And now your support can really make a tremendous difference. For a limited time, you can participate in the ACLJ Matching Challenge. If you make a gift now, it will be doubled. $25 $25 becomes $50. A $100 gift becomes $200. Please stand with the ACLJ right now and call 1 877 989 2255. That's 1 877 989 2255 or go online at aclj.org. Thank you for your support.
So this one uh, is now at the Supreme Court in the United States. I'm holding it in my hand right now, the case, and uh, this is called Darty versus uh, Buxton versus Darty. We represent the student Dustin Buxton. He was asked in an interview for admission to the radiation therapy program, and they asked the question. By the way, he he didn't bring this up. They asked the question, "What do you base your morals on?" To which he responded with a two-word response: "My faith." And the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals said. And, of course, they denied him admission because of his faith. And the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals said, well, that's okay because the First Amendment has no application to a response to a question, which is quintessential free speech, by the way. So the First Circuit saying, the Fourth Circuit has no application, the First Amendment has no application, is is an absurd ruling. Did you say in another situation they had to settle? Yeah, no. we did get one case we got settled. So, I mean, they got in trouble. They got in, Well, and this one they should have settled. They didn't, so we're taking it up to the Supreme yeah. Court. So hey, there you go. Folks have been holding. Let's grab some. Let's grab. Well, this last segment, so we got to go through the calls. Yeah, let's it's a particularly it. bad administrator. Uh, particularly, this is the same administrator. Yeah. Well, actually, the it's yeah same administrator, same program. I don't know if it was the same administrator. Yeah, I believe it was the same administrator made the statement. The other students, I'll, I'll read you the statement. To the other student, it was I understand that religion is a major part of your life. However, this field is not the place for religion. If you interview in the future, you may want to leave your thoughts and beliefs out of the interview it. process. Except, you asked me the question, "What is my faith? My morals based on?" Atheists only apply? I guess so. Atheists only apply. That's good All right. I'm sure a lot of people getting medical advice only want people who tell them, uh, only atheists, that this is it for life. Yeah. Uh, if people get it. You know, if, if they ask you. Uh, and I don't think this person had any indication he was going to be a preacher. And I don't preacher. like the fact that we'll get, we, we got to get to these calls. But, then right. I do not like the fact that the Senate thought they could ask those same questions of of uh, Judge Democrats Barrett. I do not like that. That they thought they could well, do they that. Were, they were trying to weed people out too, Jay. I mean, yep. they wanted to say people of faith need not apply for these positions. But again, I just really quickly, Jay, I want to make the point. You talked about both of those two cases. In both cases, you had to fight. One time you had to be willing to fight further than another. But we need people to be willing to engage these things if you're going to win. Absolutely. All right, let's go ahead and grab these phone calls. Let's go to Nancy in Ventura, California. You're on the air. All right, Nancy, go ahead. Hi, guys. Hey. Um, just wanted to touch base. So when the when the senators were going over this questions with, with the uh, judge, judge Barrett. this was yep. technically a job interview. Yes. So the same rule should apply to her. So if, if you guys can take this to court for this person, um, what's going to stop the senators in the future from being able to do this? I don't think they're going to ask that question again because no. they not only, first of all, Amy Barrett has been confirmed to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit. I mean, for all I know, she may have already been sworn in. Um, uh, if not, I'm sure very soon. Number one. Number two, we called them out on it. We were very clear on that. And the reaction from you all, our listening audience, which uh, you responded in an aggressive way. I don't know how many thousands of, I think it was, what was the number on that? I think 250,000 people uh, contacted us that wanted to let their voice be heard with Congress. Yeah, so that's how you, you shut that down in this kind of proceeding where they do, they are the ones that get to make a decision and you can't take them to court. They have the right to vote up or down on nominees. Uh, actually, the Judiciary Committee, by the way, can be bypassed. You don't even have to go to it. But but uh, normally you will. I think what these two senators learned, Dick Durbin and Diane uh, Feinstein, is that if you do this, you're actually just making a hero out of the nominee, right. raising their profile. And likely, I mean, this could be someone who uh, was probably someone not as well known who may one day end up serving on the U.S. Supreme Court because of what happened to them. Let me let me just say this also: one hundred eighty-six thousand four hundred and thirteen of you spoke out in her defense, and Than, that is a a pretty breathtaking number for just a, being up there for you know a couple of weeks. One hundred eighty-six thousand, well, almost two hundred thousand people. It raised her profile, as Jordan said, but yeah. Jay, the other thing it did, it sped her confirmation. She yep. moved further up the line because they made an issue of her and the American people spoke out. Her, her confirmation was sped along because of it. Absolutely. All right, Logan, another call or another comment? Your Let's call. Let's keep getting calls because we don't have much time. Let's go to Grady in Virginia on line six. Hey, Grady, you're on the air. I'm in agreement. I'm a Democrat. I'm in yep. agreement with the person who, um, what you're saying, that this yep. person should not have been um, lost his entrance into the uh College. Maybe college because yeah. of that. I agree. Um, I think a lot of times that um, if you guys, if we are able to recruit and come together as Democrats or Republicans, yeah, this was you know, not a this religious. Okay, I'm, I apologize. No, 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 I, no I, problem. I, I mean, look, I mean, no, it was the administrator. I don't know if she's a Republican or a Democrat. All yeah. I know is, and Grady, this is an interesting thing. So, because here's the the. The student is asked the. It wasn't like he brought this up on his own. Yeah. The student was asked the question, "What do you base your morals on?" He gave an honest answer: two words, "My faith." Yeah. Didn't even get past into what that faith was, which I think was yeah. unique. Also, I mean, very generic. Uh, so I think a lot of our listeners may go, may have thought, you know, personally, they may have gone a lot deeper 
Yeah. Would that have disqualified them to say my faith, uh, my Christian faith? Oh, well, that certainly would be too far. But having any faith at all, no religion allowed in this in this program. I mean, that is not the America we live in. That is not the Constitution we live under. These judges that have done this, I don't know how they got to this. It is but they did. so absurd. Well, that the we judges are, said that the First Amendment has no application. In a public school. Yeah, in a public Pu- college. University, so everybody's an adult. Yep. No First Amendment. No application of the First so you Amendment. you can ask what whatever question you yes. want, and they can... They, no, there was, they said it. No application of the First Amendment. I mean, it's like communism or something. Yeah. Like, so All right, let's grab these last two calls if we can. Let's go to Barbara in Virginia, online five. Hey, Barbara, go Barbara. ahead. Hey, Jay. Yep. To me, it seems like the question, it's a setup yeah. and a yep. filter. Of course a Christian is going to say, my God, my, my faith. It seems like it's, they're looking for a basis to, to disqualify. Yes, I think it was. I, I agree with you 100%. I think it was a setup, and we just caught them. And in one case, we settled. The other one's now on the way to the uh, – well, has been filed at the Supreme Court of the United States. So we'll see what they say. But, again, uh, we had to take it up. It was that important. Quick question for Terry's call. Because one was settled, does yeah. that help getting it to the Supreme Separate, Court? Because, because they dug their heels in. That they had they to... decided that they were going to just dig their heels in. And when they dig their heels in and they get a Fourth Circuit decision that says that the First Amendment has no application in this context to answering a question, that has to be overturned by the Supreme Court of the United States. All right, in last my call. View. Let's go to Terry in Indiana real quick, Terry. Terry, go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, it's Terry Bird. Um, without without a religion, uh, uh, whether I don't, care, I don't care which religion it is, you have no faith at all. You there's not going to be any morals or anything in this country. Well, at if, all, if, if someone world. wanted to come up with a a, a basis of, of of moral views, that's fine. That it's fine. That was based on you know some worldview of theirs, a secular worldview, say it. But this student was asked the question that said, what is your worldview, what is my your uh, morals based on? My faith. That is now at the Supreme Court of the United States. Folks, we're in a matching challenge campaign. ACLJ.org for that. That's ACLJ.org. Any amount you donate, we get a matching gift for three cases now at the Supreme Court of the United States. It is a critical time for our nation, and the American Center for Law and Justice is on the front lines, defending life and liberty, engaging the issues that matter most to you and your family. Whether it's working to protect Americans from the dangers of radical Islam and the persecution of Christians, to defending life at the U.S. Supreme Court, to protecting your religious and constitutional freedoms, we could not do this work without you, without your support. And now your support can really make a tremendous difference. For a limited time, you can participate in the ACLJ Matching Challenge. If you make a gift now, it will be doubled. $25 becomes $50. A $100 gift becomes $200. Please stand with the ACLJ right now and call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or go online at aclj.org. Thank you for your support. 